Hi everybody, um, this is a quick uh, presentation on how to verify that you have, are in possession of a valid COC. COC is a certificate of compliance uh, issued for your low voltage electrical installation. It doesn't necessarily have to be the original COC, but it has to be a valid copy. What valid means that any corrections on this document, any inconsistency of information makes this entire document valid. So it's very important that when you get the document, you know how to check it and verify that you have not been the victim of incompetence or some sort of corrupt business practice. So running through it briefly, the certificate number is a unique number for each certificate. Okay, If you have more than one certificate for your house, they should have different numbers. You won't find these numbers on any other certificates. Here, you have to check initial or supplementary certificate. And this is all stuff the electrician who's perform the work or the inspection will do. What's the difference? If it's a new building or you can't find your certificate at all, it'll be an initial certificate. If you can find your certificate and you do have it and it's valid, it'll issue a supplementary certificate. Only one of these blocks gets checked. And if it's the first supplementary certificate, he'll say supplement one to initial certificate and that value, that number there will be the certificate number of your original COC and the date that it was issued on. Then here, all these fields have to be completed. Um, the physical address, your street address, your name your building, and your GPS is not so important, but it, it can help as it do with the poll number. Suburb and township, district and town city, that has to all be filled in. Uh, the ERF, not so important. Um, but again, all this information helps and it provides useful information for the next guy that you invite around to do repairs or alterations or inspections. Then he is the registered person and you are entitled and he is required to present uh, his electrical license or wireman's license or registration to you when he arrives at your premises and you're entitled to ask for it. So he says I, his full name and his ID number and you can verify that against the information he's given you previously and declares that he's inspected and tested and found to be compliant. So that's an important thing. This report or the COC only gets issued at the end once the installation has been inspected and found to be compliant. Very important here, attached test report. This test report must reference that certificate number that we discussed previously up here. And it's basically a list of everything he's found wrong and with a price to rectify. It's you are allowed under the Consumer Protection Act to request that. Um, when he's done all that work, only then and found the installation to be compliant, only then do you get issued with the COC. So there's three types uh, of installations here and he has to check only one of the blocks. New electrical installation would be basically for a new house that's been built. An existing electrical installation uh, that would be typically if he's performing repairs or fault finding or if you're just doing an inspection prior to selling your house or new part in existing electrical installation would be basically if you're doing an alteration. So only one of these blocks gets ticks. Then um, as you said he's entered the number certificate and attached this report. We've discussed that Okay. Now, the registered person registration number. This is his number as it appears with the Department of Labor. And you can verify this with the Electrical Approved Inspection Authority of South Africa. They're in Cryfontaine, 1 Robert Road. The date that he was registered, and then he has to tick, he'll be one of these. He'll be an electrical tester for single phase, which means he cannot do any of the other work here for these other two guys. Or he'll be an electrical an uh, installation electrician means he can look at three phase and a single phase or he'll be a master installation electrician and he can look at all these three but again he's only going to tick one of these blocks. Master installation electrician would typically be for hazard environments and hospitals and so, so on. Then he signs and dates, that's the date that he issued the COC and then he, these are his details okay. The telephone number has to be there, fax number, well maybe not everybody has a fax these days. Cell number, email address, everybody in this day and age has an email address. Address got to fill it in. Again, if there's something here that you feel that should be here and it's not being filled in, I would I would question it and uh, ask him to, to put it in. Yeah, very important note. This certificate is not better than this. All the sections have been completed correctly and the test report is in the format approved by the chief inspector and attached. So we'll go through the test report in another video. This certificate will be invalid if any corrections have been made. And very important here, if there's any corrections crossing out or whatever, invalid certificate. Now, typically, the, he's going to be the electrical contractor as well. And again, he's going to repeat his name and ID number. Check that it is as per what he's filled in here and as for what information he's given you. 
his electrical contract registration number is not the same as his registered person registration number. This is his number with the ECA or the ECB. It'll typically start with WC if he's in the Western Cape, EC if he's in the Eastern Cape, followed by a four-digit number, and his date of registration. Also, unlikely to be the same as his date of registration to the Department of Labor, and he signs again. And he'll have to fill out his details here again if he's doing work because he is the electrical contractor. Name, address, telephone number, again, verify that it's the same as it is in that block. This is you. You've put your name and sign and date. When you are happy, the certificate is valid and you've received it. Now, the test report for electrical installations. Okay, so again, he has to copy that number in the top right-hand corner of page one, put it in here, and the date. Check that it's the same. He will most likely add additional pages, so that has to be checked. Then there's some notes here, which you can go through. Very One important thing here, the an appliance that is plugged in is not part of the permanent installation and therefore doesn't form part of this report. So you cannot expect him to come in and inspect your installation, issue a COC, and now you think that your kettle and your fridge and your geezer are 100%. Uh, um, so he might, he'll cover the, with a, just on a geezer and a stove, he'll cover the wiring up to the geezer or stove, but he's not going to inspect inside the geezer or stove. That's your responsibility. Okay, location. Okay, it says if not provided in the certificate of compliance, but still think it's a good idea to include physical address, name, building, and again, check it against what he's entered previously. Existing certificate, yes or no. As we've said before, if it's an initial certificate, it'll say no. If it's a supplementary, he'll tick yes. Verify and check against what was on the first page. Date issued, that would be for the existing certificate and the certificate number. Okay. So is an existing installation, alteration, new installation, or temporary installation? We've covered three of these before. Temporary installation would be something like a building site container or something like that which is going to be moved, and, and only one of these blocks can be checked. Okay. Same here. Residential, commercial, industrial, common area for multiple users, sectional title. Only one of these blocks will be checked. And if it's another type of installation, he has to describe it. Okay. Type of electricity system. Um, so this is basically the earthing system on your premises. It's unlikely it'll be a TT. We don't have TT in South Africa. Um, an IT system would typically be found in a hospital or a ship. So it's going to be one of these three. And he's only going to tick one of them. Uh, he asks if the supplier has provided an earth terminal, yes or no. And then he looks at the voltage. On a single phase system, it'll be 230 volts. And it'll tick 230 and it'll tick single phase. I've never seen a two-phase system, but on a three-phase system, uh, which you do have in some of the houses built um, before the new regulations come in, you'll have 400 volts, and you'll tick that. Uh, 525, you typically five on a mine or other voltages like 690 voltages elsewhere. But you can only tick one of this row and one of this row. The phase rotation, that really doesn't matter to you. He just checks if it's clockwise or anti-clockwise. The frequency. In South Africa, 50 hertz. That'll be checked. Perspective, short circuit, current, and point of control. Okay, so this is three things here. He can either calculate it, which he should be doing here, or he can measure it with his instrument, but there's a place for that later, or he can say from the supplier. What this means is he reads it off the breaker. You should ask him to calculate at this point. So there is some kind of checking and verification, because there'll be an option to in this form to have all three of these three and you want to check that there's some kind of consistency. Then he's going to tick the main switch type. Again, only one of these will be checked. If it's a single phase system, it'll be two poles. If it's a three phase system, three poles or four poles. He has to put the current rating and the short circuit withstand rating. And again, you can go up to the main breaker on your switchboard and verify these values. They're printed on the breaker. Rated earth leakage stripping current, typically about 30 milliamps. Um, for some industrial applications, it might be higher, not higher than 30 milliamps for a domestic single phase. And if it is other, he'll fill in that value there. Surge protection, yes or no. It's only one that can be checked. And, and very important here, it's a tick, not an X. Is an alternative power supply installed? That would be a generator or PV panels or whatever you got there, yes or no? Is part of the installation specialized in electrical installation? Um, for a domestic installation, there should be no. But if it is, he's going to have to be, do additional pages. 
Is any of the in, part of the insulation the voltage above 1 kV? Should be no. If it's above, it falls under SANS 101.42-2, which is not the standard. Is the insulation 105 in the same new supply? This will typically be for, um, you might find in construction sites, you might find in buildings. Um, but unless he's doing a COC for the entire building, should be no. If yes, he's got to fill out the name of the person who supervised the installation. Okay, now pay attention to section 3. This is the description of the insulation covered by this report. And this is where some guys try to get away uh, with not being responsible for certain areas. So read this area carefully, check your happy. Um, if there's something you feel that you agreed on him being including, um, and he hasn't included or is excluded in this area, make a note of it, get him to get him to add it. If he won't add it, call the electrical inspection authority just to verify. Okay, number of circuits or points covered by this report. Again, is an existing or new altered or temporary? You've got to check that it's existing, it's in co um, compliance and in agreement with what was written previously or it's in this block. He only fills in one of these major columns. The other one gets crossed through it, a line through the entire block. Okay, and this will basically be your main distribution board and if you've got sub-distribution boards A, B, C or D or whatever. If you've got more than four sub-distribution boards, he has to put in another page here and carry on E, F, G, H. He'll talk about lighting circuits, and these will be lighting circuits supplied directly off the board or off the sub-distribution boards, and there'll be a number here. Lighting points, that's your light, socket outlet circuits, that's you can verify yourself by counting the breakers. Your board must be labeled, so it should be pretty easy, and socket outlets, and so on and so forth. So that's that section. The next section is the inspection. Uh, has he done uh, an additional test? Uh, normally it's yes. Again, is an existing or new alt temporary if it's it has to be in agreement with what was said forward uh, previously and if it's not that a line through the column that it doesn't apply to okay here you cannot have no it can either be yes or not applicable okay and he has to fill in each of these lines um, where it's likely you're going to have a not applicable is going to be either a 13 point a or a 13 point b okay so he'll say yes to one and not applicable to the other in this situation. If you have a no in this column, it means that this installation is not safe and the COC is not valid because COC is only issued for safe compliant installations. Okay, this section. These are all basically all the tests that he's going to do here. Again, the column that doesn't apply, cross through it. Now he's going to put his type and, and maybe even a serial number of his instrument and he's going to record his values. He's not going to say pass or correct or OK here. That's not acceptable. If there's an ohm value, we want to see a numeric value there. If there's a killer amp rating, we want to see a numeric value. Same for volt, mega ohm, milliamp. Continuity of ring circuits, this is, there is, this is not a value. This is just a OK or pass or correct. So there you can put it in. Now, here's another opportunity for you to look at your Ka value. Here, he should actually be measuring it or um, here he can measure and here he can say from the supplier so now you've throughout the document you should have a calculated a measured or from supplier um, value again this is not law but it's a good it's just good practice then we're going to come down to these last four tests these last four tests it's simply a correct or incorrect pass there's there's no numeric value and this is all manual testing um, or you can test with an instrument here um, but he will typically put a tick for each of these. Again, if it's applicable, or he can say, you know, um, for if you're looking at a single phase insulation and phase rotation, that'll be not applicable. So it's, it's going to be very important that this is all filled out and all there are ticks next to everything that is applicable. And if it's not applicable, it says NA. Okay, then again, look out for this comment section. This is where a lot of guys try to typically get away with their responsibility of not checking a difficult area and excluding it from the installation, but you've paid for it, you think your installation is safe and compliant, and there's a part of it he's avoided. So read this carefully. If there's anything he's specifically excluded, point it out with him, and again, if you're not convinced, turn to the Electrical Inspection Authority. Now we come to Section 5, which is responsibility. Um, if he's done the design, the material specification, procurement, the construction, and the 
basically the um, inspection and tests. He'll fill out 5.4 only, and he takes responsibility for sections 5.1 to 5.3. If it's different people doing each of these stages, well, name and block letters, position, in other words, their position in the company, the signature, the, this will be an engineer typically, that'll be an extra registered number, date, address, um, and, and the same for all these things. This guy doesn't need to be an engineer. He can just be the buyer, but he still needs to put in all his details in here, and the guy doing the construction as well. And then this is the one that you need to pay attention to. So if he is the electrician, he won't fill in those first three sections, but he does by filling in, and it states previously take responsibility for those other three sections. So he'll say, and this check this is compliance with the 13A, 13B we uh, discussed previously. It has to agree. If he said 13.A, that must be ticked. If 13.B, that must be ticked, not both. Um, and here, here is why I say look out for his exclusion. But it says the extent of my liability is limited to the installation described in section three. Okay, name of registered person, registration certificate number with Department of Labor. Again, check it's in, com in, in agreement with what was on page one. Same here. Uh, his signature, his telephone number, date. Check all that information. And this one is if you want it verified by the chief inspector or inspection authority or professional uh, engineer. Um, this is the section that applies, so we wa wouldn't normally worry about this in normal situations. So if there's anything you feel I haven't covered and um, you want some clarification, please uh, let me know in the comments line. And thanks for watching.